So I'm Gary, um, and I'd like you to meet my monster. There it is. Um, monster, this is everybody. Today, what I would love to do is talk to you a bit about collaboration. For me, the fastest way to discover joy and inspiration and an incredible sort of living feeling is to make something with somebody else. It's simply to collaborate, to bring two or more people together under the right conditions and make something that they could have never made alone, like this. We'll make this the, uni there'll be the universal sign for collaboration. We'll do this now. <laughs> so that's what I want to talk about. And the way I want to do that is to share with you um, a number of practices. And I call them practices because, well, you have to practice them, actually. Um, there are things that you can try, small things that you can try, to make your collaboration more inspiring and more joyful and more surprising. Um, and I'm going to do that by sharing some examples, some stories from my life, from my work, and from my art, and from my improvisation that I play with. Um, but here's the thing, I am a, a self-proclaimed sort of collaboration junkie, uh, but I'm up here all by myself, all alone, it's lonely. Uh, so I'm going to be asking you to help me throughout this talk. Um, and to do that, to get you prepared, because I want us to make something together, I want us to collaborate. Uh, and to do that, I want you to try something now. Um, you're going to be using this information later. And here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you to notice more right now in your environment. To look around this room, you just got here, to look around this room uh, and the people in it and notice something that you've not yet noticed because there's always something else to notice. So take 12.5 seconds to do that. Look around, notice something you haven't noticed, and remember that thing, because I'll be asking you for it later. I'm going to do it too. I haven't done this yet. OK. You got something? Everybody? Every single person? Good. Great. Lovely. So when I think about collaboration, I think there are three things that you can try. And the very first thing that I want to talk about is something really simple. It's this idea. If you want to collaborate, and have your collaborations be more fruitful, more surprising, more inspiring. There's something very simple you can do right away. And it's to ask somebody for help. And I want to use an example from when I was much younger uh, to describe this and to illustrate it. So here's what you have to imagine. You have to imagine uh, a Gary, but he's seven. So he is, uh, he's a lot skinnier. He, <laughs> he's a bit shorter, he's got more hair. And this Gary had a lot of nightmares when he was growing up. And these were like, not your sort of just, hey, gosh, there's a monster. These things were like vivid nightmares. And there would be these nightmares where I was already asleep in my bed, but I was dreaming, so I didn't know that I was actually asleep. You know what I'm talking about. There's a name for that. I don't know what it is. But I was having one of those, and I had them a lot. And these nightmares would happen where suddenly the door of my room would break open, and then uh, in would come this sort of giant hand, and it would grab me out of my bed. And if that wasn't enough, it would then take me into this sort of giant maw of a mouth, and if that wasn't enough, I'd get eaten. You'd figure the dream was over. It wasn't. I'd get swallowed and inside the stomach of this creature, graveyards of zombies and creatures. And it was just horrific. So at night, when this would happen, I would waddle over to my parents' room, and I'd wake up my father, and I'd say, I'm having these nightmares. My dad would pick me up and take me downstairs to the kitchen and put me up on a stool. And there, he'd put in some cinnamon toast, and he'd bring out some pencils and some paper. And that's when he said to me, well, why don't you draw these things? Why don't you draw some of these nightmares? And I said, okay. I started drawing, I started doodling, and I draw it and doodle. And as I was doing it, and this would happen sort of night after night, um, I would draw them, and then it just sort of naturally occurred that he and I started to name them. And he said, what's this one? What's that one? And he would write his name if, if he thought of one, and I would write one too. And um, we found some pretty interesting monsters. Um, for example, we would draw a giant lobster claw guy. And... Um, I would draw, uh, this is uh, Angel Demon, which something's going on there. Um, uh, you know, uh, Frankenstein Bat Monster. They just kept going. This one, and it's hard to see, but this is my dad's handwriting on this. And it actually says, um, Drunken Kid with Mad Mom. <laughs> it was a complicated household. <laughs> so, we would, I would draw these things and he, we would, he would name them and, and I drew one of my favorites. This is that I'd like to introduce to you now, which is this one back here. It may be hard to see, it's a little bit low, but um, this is Toothless Monster. 
ironic. <laughs> it's got a lot of teeth. And it's one of my favorites, and I wanted to blow it up and paint it and make it big because I love it. I love this piece. Um, and I can do this because my parents saved all of my drawings, or at least some of them. I've got a big box of these drawings. And what would happen over a while, after a while is we would draw these things, and my dad would turn to me, and he would give me um, pens and things. And one night, and I don't think he planned this. This was like in a parental book or something. He just said, you know, if you make these, you can also make them disappear. You can just erase them. And he handed me a pencil and turned it over. And I started to erase my drawings. Not all of them, but some of them. And the truth is, the nightmares got a little less intense. They started to diminish. They became less important until eventually they went away. And this idea of asking for help to create this beginning collaboration for me has really, really stuck. And so I kept drawing monsters. And the monsters got me through. They got me through junior high and high school, those tortured years. And as I kept making art, I started to discover more things to do. And I was really interested in this idea of collaborating when I made art, because that, even that early instance, it wasn't really my drawing anymore. I let it go. My father sort of worked on it. We created something together. And it really, as I was working, there's sort of another aspect of collaboration that I started to discover. And it's this second sort of practice that you might want to try. And it's this idea of letting go. Letting go of judgment, letting go of control, letting go of your agenda when you come to the table to work with someone else. And I was really interested in this idea in particular around my art. How can I let go of my art? And so I started to create works that I was hoping other people would sort of finish, would complete, where the audience would fill in the blanks at the end. Uh, I would create an exhibition where I went to a gallery and I put all my pieces up on the gallery, but I didn't name any of them. They had no names. And what I did was invited the audience to come and finish the piece, to name them. And they would come and they would sort of put name tags all around them. This is an example of one of those. Um, so here's a monster. They've evolved slightly. They got some color. Uh, now, I had something in mind in this painting. I sort of knew what I was doing. But I let go enough to put it up on a wall. And the final title of this painting, I would never have thought of. And I like it so much better. This is gluten intolerance. <laughs> which is so sweet. And I was like, you got to be kidding. So this kind of letting go allows for that kind of surprise that you just had. I had it too. And if you let go of control, those kind of things can happen. So I continue to make monsters and I'm continuing to, try to find ways to let go, to let other people finish them, to fill it out. And currently what I'm doing is I'm making small monsters, little domino monsters. This is a joy bot. Um, I carry them around all the time. Here it is. I've got one here as well. It's a joy bot. It's on the back of a domino. And what joy bots do, and I've, I make thousands of these, it's kind of my therapy. Um, and what they do is um, I sort of put them out in the world. Joy bots are um, sort of meant to watch you. They sit on a shelf. And uh, then every now and then, they'll just give you sort of outrageous compliments. <laughs> like, it's tell me I'm doing OK. I'm OK for time so far. You guys laughed once or twice. So it's good. I'm doing all right. Thank you. All right. So, so these joy bots, and, I, and um, I make brave bots, and they're kind of bots. I make thousands of them, actually. And, I was thinking to myself, how could I let go of these as well? So I thought I literally would do it. Um, I've taken hundreds of joy bots and left them in different places. <laughs> Some places more private than others, but... Uh, this is in Portland, I'm doing this in other cities as well, where I just leave these bots, and they have a little sort of um, notice on the side, a little URL, it's a joy bot. And it, what it says basically is, this is a joy bot. Um, if you find it, uh, take a picture of something that brings you joy. Send it to me, because I'd like to see it, and I want to share it. We'll kind of create a bit of a gallery, what brings Portland joy gallery in particular here. Um, and then leave it for somebody else to find and see what happens. And this is literally letting go of the art. Let it go, which I love doing. I mean, here's what happens. So this is a, I know. <laughs> this is Tucker. What brings him joy is his skateboard. Uh, I know. Uh, Left this in southeast Portland, his mom found it, took this picture. I mean, it's beautiful. And then that, that bot's been left for somebody else. 
Um, this is one of my favorites. I've got lots of these, but this is my favorite. Um, a little bit hard to see, but this was left sort of in a coffee shop. Now, this guy in the middle, um, here's what brings him joy more than anything else. It's his health insurance card. <laughs> Damn right. So he took a picture, and then he left his bot, and then someone else found it. And of course, their lovely uh, yellow dog is what brings them joy. And this bot's out there. It's doing things. So this is a sort of the idea around letting go. Ask for help. Let go. And then the very third sort of practice, the third thing you can do, um, I explore this in a whole other art form. And that's the art form of improvisation. And in improv, anything can happen. In improvisation, um, people get up on stage without a script, without a plan sometimes without any talent whatsoever. <laughs> Doesn't matter. And improvisers are amazing at collaborating, actually. And they do a lot of things. But one thing they do that I'm really excited about is they do this. They use other people's stuff. And what I mean by that, I don't mean like they, they sort of go over and steal your stapler. <laughs> but what they do is that they take ideas that you have, that the other improvisers have, and they incorporate them immediately. They take them and they use them. And we're all improvisers. You don't have to be a performer or, or be on stage to improvise. Every conversation you have is a piece of improvisation. You don't wake up with the script and say, oh, hi, honey, how are you? Oh, I'm fine, how are you? So we're all improvising all the time. And improv is a high-wire collaboration act. And darn it, we should do some now. That's what I think. <laughs> so remember that thing I asked you to notice? OK, here's what I want you to do. In a moment, I want you to turn to somebody next to you and take that thing that you noticed and combine it with the thing that they noticed to come up with the name of a band that never existed. <laughs> right? So if you notice the exit sign and the speaker, exit speaker. It can be anything. You have 12.9 seconds to do that. Turn to somebody and come up with a band name. Go. All right, that's time. Okay, here's how this is gonna work. Uh, what's your band name right up here? What's that? Heater Hoops. Heater Hoops is the band, and of course, the genre of music they play is what? Is what? It's what? They're drum playing music? They're drumming band, okay. Heater Hoops is a drumming band. And their first album was called what? What was it called? Nostril Banner. Sorry? Nostril Banner. Household Banner? Yeah. Nostril. Nostril. Nostril Banner. Of course it was. <laughs> Heater Hoops is a drumming group, and their first uh, uh, album was called Nostril Banner. <laughs> and uh, 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 the, the main song right here, what was the main song, uh, Nostril Banner? Red Booty. Red Booty. Now, of course, the album cover for Nostril Banner was, it's, it's striking. And, and actually, can I ask one, two, three, just stand up for us, please? It's okay, it's not gonna hurt, I promise. Okay, just come close to the stage, close to the stage. I want you to turn around, look at the audience. And on the count of three, just strike, strike any pose you want. One, two, three, go. That is the cover <laughs> of Nostril Banner. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is crazy cool, the lead singer for uh, this band, what was it again? I even forgot, what the heck was it? Yeah, Heater Hoops, of course, is here, is here, they're here. Um, and where are they? Where's that lead singer? This is absolutely interesting. <laughs> where are they? Yeah, they're right there, thank you. And um, can you sing us just the chorus of the main song? Okay, just go ahead and I'll repeat it, go ahead. Yeah, uh, of, of, the, of the main song of, of uh, Nostril Banner, what was the, uh, the a uh, Red Booty, thank you, yes, good, good. Yeah, that was it. I'll just repeat it for you. Sitting in the gym, wearing my booty. And we all know this song, right? So one, two, three. Sitting in the gym, wearing my booty. Damn, that's good. That is collaboration. No, you. Peter Hoops on iTunes. Uh, if you want your collaborations to be more surprising, more inspiring, more joyful, 
like we just did. Try some of this. Ask for help. We don't do this enough. It makes us too vulnerable. When we ask for help, we let go of the filters that we have to make ourselves look smart, funny, clever. You ask for help, those disappear. But that's when the magic happens. I've worked with leaders in large organizations who have giant responsibilities, and I've watched major breakthroughs happen simply by having them ask each other for help. It's remarkable. Let go. Let go of your agenda. Let go of control. Most meetings, if you go to them, most of them, if you actually go, are just agenda fests, where people are just sitting there waiting for their own agenda to be said and to come out, and they're like, okay, I said my thing, I'll check out now. And this other person's got their own agenda going too. And so it's just sort of this agenda fest where nobody's really listening. No one's really being changed by what they hear. And that's what letting go means. So try to let go a bit more. And using other people's stuff, other people will want to come back and play with you and work with you and be with you if you can demonstrate that you've taken their ideas and you've used them. Improvisers call this yes and. You may have heard this. It's a wonderful term. It means taking the idea, recognizing somebody else's idea, and using it, moving it on, moving it forward. These are three things that I'd like to invite you to try to make your collaborations more surprising and inspiring. But I want to give you one more thing to help you. These are collaboration bots. Uh, I made 650 of them. <laughs> One for each of you. Oh, it's an Oprah moment, I know. I did, I did. Ask my wife for months, I've been making these things. These hands. Uh, and here's the deal. Here's why they're a collaboration bot. If you look in the middle, of these things. There's a big blank circle. It's not done. This is a piece of art that is not finished. And it needs you. It needs you to finish it, to put a mark of some kind in the middle of this thing. A smiley face, an initial, anything. It needs you to finish it. And if you can't think of anything, grab a stranger, grab a friend, and ask them to collaborate too. I think the gig is up. Under your seats, take to the bottom our collaboration bots for each and every one of you. Thank you. Here's my invitation to you. During the action break, I will be somewhere up in the library on the second floor. I will have pens with me. You can come see me actually out in the lobby as well. There'll be some. Finish your bot. Collaborate with me. Let go. Be surprised. Notice more. Collaborate together. Thank you. <laughs>